In 2020, the global community marks the 25th anniversary of the Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action. A five-year milestone has also been reached towards achieving the Sustainable Development Goals. 2020 is therefore a pivotal year for the achievement of gender equality and the empowerment of women and girls everywhere. More than ever, evidence and knowledge about what works for gender equality, for whom, where, and why is important to be able to catalyze equitable, inclusive, sustainable progress for gender equality. Gender responsive evaluations have two key dimensions. The first is to assess results and the extent to which a program or intervention achieves its intended gender equality and human rights result. The second is to look at processes and examine gender equality and human rights mainstreaming in the programming process and in the implementation of the evaluation itself. In 2019, UN Women Independent Evaluation Service initiated a good practice review of gender responsive evaluation. This is to identify trends and feature some of the good practices that UN Evaluation Group partners have integrated gender responsive evaluation approaches into their evaluation practices. This resulted in a recent publication, Good Practices in Gender Responsive Evaluation. In 2018, UN Women published a new guide called Inclusive Systemic Evaluation for Gender Equality, Environments, and Marginalized Voices. There are three things that are unique about the IFC for GEMS approach. First, it provides a way to incorporate systems thinking into evaluation by applying boundary analysis throughout the evaluation process. It also advocates for evaluation to prioritize the assessment of the three dimensions, gender equality, the environmental dimension, and marginalization, which is based on specific context. It also focuses on analyzing how and when these three dimensions intersect with one another to affect desired change. At UN Women, the Independent Evaluation Service has recently developed a rapid tool to assess progress on achieving gender equality and women's empowerment in humanitarian contexts. The tool consists of a practical dashboard and questionnaire with an accompanying guidance note to allow evaluators to assess in just three days whether an intervention is gender negative, gender blind, gender sensitive, gender responsive, and gender transformative through the three dimensions, leadership and participation, protection and safety, and economic well-being. COVID-19 has been challenging the world in unprecedented ways, and the need to adapt our work is critical. UN Women has developed the pocket tool for managing gender responsive evaluations and research in the COVID-19 pandemic. The tool provides practical guidelines, tips, good practices, as well as reference links to support gender responsive research and evaluation in the context of COVID-19. Yuga Moment has recently finalized a working paper that explores existing approaches for measuring the impact on gender equality and women's empowerment. It provides recommendations on how to assess the impact of UN Women's work and how to enhance its efforts in this area. In UN Women, we believe supporting countries to evaluate key national policies to measure the progress towards the achievement of gender equality and women's empowerment is a critical strategy to advance women's human rights at the country level. New Women also provides extensive technical and capacity development support across various regions to strengthen the gender responsiveness of monitoring and evaluation systems. When members of parliament examine budgets, they can use evaluative evidence to inform gender responsive policy -making. The same can be said about evaluations that are nationally driven. They can increase the likelihood that findings will be used for planning across various development sectors. Multi-stakeholder partnerships whose members include civil society organizations, voluntary organizations for professional evaluation, BOPI, the International Organization for Cooperation and Evaluation, IOCE, and UN entities can play a key role. As part of the global evaluation community and the Eval Gender Plus Network, we can continue to influence policymakers and other stakeholders into recognizing the need, supply, and use of gender-responsive evaluation. Transformative changes occur at the level of the individual, household, or in the communities. Therefore, evaluations must move further upstream to inform strategies, policies, and systems 
through robust evidence and innovation. Gender-responsive evaluations can support the shift to more systemic complexity and adaptive evaluations needed to bring about the bold and transformative changes for all, as envisioned in the 2030 Agenda.